This is RJ Carbone, and you're listening to BD4. Anthony for three. Bang! That one goes down. This one by Mattingly. Oh, hang on to the RJ Barrett. He does it again from downtown. He is just tearing the Orioles apart. It's good. It's good. Randall gets the bounce, and he ties the game. Easton ducks under. Got it. Creates and shows some dexterity as well with the left hand. Yankees win. Yankees win. So, all right. Um, listen, we're getting right to it. You, you, you lose a twenty-seven point lead. To the Lakers not long ago. You blow a pretty big lead against Utah. You're blowing out Portland the other night by 23 points late third quarter. And you lose that game. You had a comfortable lead against a young, inexperienced, OKC tanking team. And you lose that in overtime. And here we are tonight against the Nets without Kyrie, without KD, uh, still without Simmons. 28 point lead in that first half. A 28 point lead. Entering the halftime, still with a comfortable lead. And we lose this game by 5 points 111 106. We're pushing the tempo in that first half. We're moving the basketball around. We're knocking down our threes like Golden State. And it's funny because I go upstairs. I'm watching the game in my studio, but I go upstairs for for a glass of water or whatever it was. I don't remember. And I I tell my dad, I'm I'm like, he's watching the game too. I'm like, you know they're going to blow this, right? You know they're going to blow this. But the funny thing is, I was saying that in a joking manner just because the Knicks have been blowing big leads lately. I didn't actually believe that they were going to blow this game. I didn't actually believe. In the back of my mind, I I was saying there was no way they were actually going to blow this one. This is nearly impossible to blow. The Knicks even had the favorite. They were the favorite on the money line tonight. And it's impossible to get them to be a favorite this year. They blow it. And is it bad that as soon as they started blowing it and as soon as uh, the the Nets started gaining momentum in that third quarter, is it bad that I started rooting against Thibodeau? Because I'm watching him. And he's leaving his starters out there for the majority of the third. For for, for the 59th game in a row. And I start rooting for it. Because I'm I'm just, I want to see it happen to him. Right in front of him. I want to see, I want want him to realize why this is such a dreadful error that he continues to make. I want to see him deal with it. Face the consequences. And I thought Jeff Van Gundy was on point again tonight. And every time I listen to this... Um, I watch the broadcast on ESPN. Every time I do, JVG is making up, making some great points. And I think at the start of this game, I think it was he was saying how this this playing fantasy, really, that the Knicks are, are aiming for. It's bad for them. It's bad for their long term development. It's it's only going to hurt them and prolong everything else. And I've been saying that. You've been saying that. We've all been saying it. But we don't hear it often from guys on, on you know, on national TV. Because these broadcasters got to be, you know, Breen can't say this stuff. You got to be professionally correct. And he was great again tonight. I mean, he was on point with that. He's been on point a lot. You know, he was on point with his Julius Randle takes. He was getting on tips a ton in that, uh, was it the Miami game on ESPN a few weeks back? You know, he was spot on about needing a point guard. He was saying how he was tired of seeing Julius Randle 
dog it up and down the court, and I'm paraphrasing, doing these, you know, lazy generic handoffs with Fournier all the time. There was this one possession, Randall takes it up court, he basically passes it backwards to Kemba. Just completely low IQ shit. With 40 seconds left in this game, there was that just one play that I thought, again, perfectly portrayed Randall's lack of energy at times. He and Robinson were right underneath the rim. Right underneath the rim. Nobody else even in the vicinity. And I forget who it was, but someone from from the Nets misfires. And all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, you've got Bruce Brown playing hard, with heart, hustling, going for the rebound, and he snags it from both of them. They just stand there. And the play continues, and they're still just standing there. Nobody's even going to rotate back out to the perimeter. They're just standing there. So the players continue to not do their jobs. Tibbs is out here continuing to get outcoached on a nightly basis now. He's getting out coached. Vogel out coached him. Billups. Now you got Steve Nash, and Nash isn't even that great of a coach. He's not even a. I wouldn't consider him a great coach. But what does Nash do? He adjusts tonight. You know, Drummond had damn near 20 rebounds, but he doesn't play the entire fourth quarter. Aldridge does. He dropped 11 points, Aldridge, in the fourth. He played all 12 minutes. Because Nash adjusted to the flow of the game. You've got Cam Thomas, some 20-year-old kid who goes 2 for 11 in his first three quarters of play tonight. He gets 12 fourth-quarter minutes, all fourth-quarter minutes, and he goes 7 for 10 and cooks us. Tell me right now, tell me right now, how often do you see Thibodeau give a leash like that to his young players? Uh, prospects. How often? Tell me. You don't, right? Instead, what you'll get from Thibodeau, you'll get Taj Gibson playing 25 minutes in the game. That's what he did tonight. Taj played 25. Well, you have the kid you traded a first rounder for and the kid you drafted in the lottery last season. They combined for 25 minutes together. Obi and Cam. And then when they both come in, he checks them in, and they're both used as these off-ball floor spacers in the corner. Cam is a guy who needs just two dribbles to get into the lane, draw contact, or finish at the rim. Obi's a guy who, you know, could be killing it in these short roll actions on those driving dumps. Don't play, or they're just used incorrectly. It's one of the two. Deuce McBride is in Westchester. There's no way he's that much worse than Kemba. No way. Grimes. He was 3 for 3 in the first quarter. He takes two shots the remainder of the night. We don't set him up with anything. You're going with Burks over Emmanuel quickly with how hot quickly was later in the game? You got to show some confidence in your in your young players. You got to show some confidence. And it's not always about them. It's about helping these veterans out. I mean, you're giving 40 minutes a night to Julius Randle, who continues to show you time after time that he gets gassed in these fourth quarters every single time, completely gassed. It's funny. It's really funny to me, bro. You had, Ju- you had Julius. I'm trying to, what did he miss? Six, six of his seven shots? He missed six in a row at one point in the third quarter, and he's still in there. And you, and you look at all these losses. You look back, and there's one pattern right now recently. We're getting cooked by a lot of young players. Trey Mann and Giddy. Tonight, Cam Thomas. 
I, I, something's got to give. Something's got to give. He literally, Julius literally missed six of his seven shots, and he played the entire third quarter. It must be nice to have a leash like that. I just don't understand it, man. And this is gonna be a quick episode. This is it. I'm not. I'm not going to break right now. This is it. You might have to fire this guy. You might have to. And I don't want to hear about stability. You need stability. The Knicks haven't had stability at the head coaching position. Well, guess what? Stability doesn't mean you stick with the uh, a head coach who's not fit for here. Just because you want. Stability, you know, stability. It's you're overrating it a bit. If the coach isn't fit for here, you don't keep him around just so you can have stability. I'm sorry. If you have to make a switch, it's unfortunate. You have to make the switch, and I'm not calling Thibodeau a bad coach. I'm just saying he is not fit for what we're trying to do here. He's not fit. So at least this All Star break, you got to sit down with him, the front office. This is our plan, Tom. Are you okay with it? Because they're on two completely different pages. I mean, most recently, the front office. I mean, the front office is getting players that Thibodeau doesn't play. They, they aren't Tibbs guys. And then most recently, it's it's Cam Reddish, right? We heard the Cam Reddish reports, and but this guy, you know, he's he's a guy who runs. He's a coach who runs a tight eight nine man rotation. Despite the wins or losses, I mean, we need to start going full on youth. It's we're at the point where it's well overdue. We need to start doing it. And and I know tanking isn't happening under Tibbs. You know that's that's the problem right now because we have, like I said, we have the wrong fit. We have a guy who's sixty four, maybe sixty five years old. He has himself a resume to pad. He's chasing wins, and that's not going to happen. You know. That's the problem. He's chasing wins when we should just be chasing player development. That should be the main focus, at least. And and going for wins right now, it's just not going to work. You look at Thibodeau's resume. I did a little research after the game tonight. 2011, his first head coaching job with Chicago takes him to the semifinals. The very next year, he's the first round exit. Flash forward a bit. His final year in Chicago, he gets 50 wins. The next year, he goes to Minnesota. Or maybe it was a couple years off. But the very next season, he coaches and he gets 31 wins. Then he bounces back the next year with 47 wins with the Wolves. Then he gets 19, year, uh, 19 wins in the next year. Gets canned. Last year for the Knicks, 41 wins. This year... 25 and 33 with maybe 23 games left after tonight. I mean, this, this, I, I think we have to calm down with the Tibbs love. I, I think he's a good coach. He's a good coach. I don't think he's a great coach. I appreciate that he had a lot to do with the season last year, but he's not doing the same things this year. And we're seeing it's not being masked anymore because the team, the, the, the team's not winning to mask these same issues that he had last season. And he's not adjusting. He's just not adjusting. And an NBA, any NBA head coach cannot be blowing three 20 point leads in a week's worth of games. I'm sorry, that can't happen. So I think you got to make the switch. I think eventually you got to make the switch. Either either before the season ends or sometime in the summer, you got to make the switch. And it hurts me to say it. I've always been a Tibbs guy, but if you got to get younger, get younger. You know, I'm a fan of Johnny Bryant. I think get that, you know, little John Woodson West Coast offense in here, right? That's another thing, the Thibodeau offense. You know, I, I'm watching the Celtics the other night. I'm watching them play Philly, um, and they, they're streaking right now. They're on like a nine-game win streak at the time. They did lose tonight to Detroit. Somebody won a lot of money. Um, 
but they're using Tatum, Brown, their young players, Robert Williams, in, in stagger screens, um, wide set offense, running double horns, twirl actions, you know, Carolina, Bulldog, Chicago pin down, all these different types of, of, of they're doing it, anything, but the Knicks aren't doing any of that. The Knicks are out there with their generic, slow-paced half-court game. Run an ISO for Julius. Let Julius and, and Fournier do that DHO bullshit. Ignoring Mitch Robinson on the pick and roll. All these great cutters being used as spot-up floor spacers. Standing on the wing in the corner. James Dolan left the game tonight after that Bruce Brown dagger. Not good when you start to hear the boss's name again. You know, we, we, he's been pretty quiet these recent years, but it's not good that we're starting to hear his name again. And that's it, guys. I'm, 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 not, I'm not going deep in this episode. This is the final episode before the All-Star break. Um, I, I might have one or two in there, you know, because we're, we're off, uh, I think it's a nine-game, nine nine-day break. Maybe a little less. Um, whatever next Friday is. So, yeah. So I, I might have a few in there, but I don't know. We'll see. But it, it's ugly, man. I don't know how much longer I can do it. I really don't. I'm sitting here and I'm watching my team make the same mistakes over and over. And I'm watching my head coach do absolutely zero about it. And that's a problem. That's a big problem. You can't continue to do the same shit. And expect to change. That's the definition of insanity. And Julius had a good game. He had, he had you know, 30, uh, 31 more points and, you know, double double and all that. But it, it's. It's not working with him as the point forward, as the primary playmaker. So you need a point guard. You know, this way you can relegate Julius to more of a second, third option. You need a head coach who holds accountability. I, I, I'm i done. I, I'm just, I'm exhausted. I am. So we're going to head to a break. When we get back from break, we're going to wrap this shit up with, with the NYY, NYK, MMA question of the day. Because that's it. This might be the shortest episode we've had in forever. You know, usually we're around 40-something minutes to an hour. Can't do that tonight. Can't do that right now. This is, I'm, I'm glad we're getting this break. And it's not, it's not a big enough break for me, to be honest with you. This is, this Knicks team just did so much damage to me. Uh, and this break is coming at a perfect time. So I, I will say that. Because I might have, I, I, I was, you know, you, you could see I missed the last, I missed like two Knicks games this last week or so, because I'm getting there, guys. I'm getting to that point where I'm like, I don't even want to do this anymore. But I will. I will. I think this break will help me refresh myself. Not that things are going to change post-All-Star break, because this team's done in the gutter, and the worst part about it is they're going to continue to tank with their vets, which is just purposeless, directionless. I'm out. Let's head to break. We'll get to the question when we get back. Stay with us. Hey, guys. So, I've noticed that only a small portion of you who watch BD4 on YouTube are actually subscribed. So, if you do enjoy this podcast, and maybe you want to be notified when new episodes release, I'd consider subscribing and also hitting that notification bell. This way, we can help the channel grow, and you won't miss a single episode of BD4. Alright, let's get back to it. So, if you guys want to follow me on social media, be sure to do so right now. I'm on Facebook at RJ Carbone, and I'm also on Instagram at Rob J Carbone. Once again, if you want to find me on Facebook, that is RJ Carbone. Instagram at Rob J Carbone.
So BD4 is on so many platforms to listen to. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud. You can listen to us on Spotify. You can find us on our sponsor, Anchor, and many other listening platforms as well, wherever you get your podcasts. But we are also available to watch on YouTube. So if you want to watch us on YouTube, go subscribe there. But if you prefer to listen to us, again, many, many, many listening platforms. Just be sure to subscribe, download, give us a rating, a review, comment, share the podcast, and all that fun stuff. This is BD4, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. Um, <laughs> let's wrap this thing up. So this episode, episode 323, our NYYNYK MMA question of the day. Name the top five scorers, points per game, of the 2018-19 New York Knicks. Sorry, I had to take a second there. Name the top five scorers in terms of points per game. That were on the 2018-2019 New York Knicks. All right, let me know the answer. <clears throat> Facebook, Instagram, you know where to go. My DMs or in the comments section once I publish one of the promo short clips to this episode. And I'll give you a shout out if you get it correct. Guys, that's it. I'm done. That's all I've got for this episode. <clears throat> um, yep, that's it for me. I'm your host, RJ Carbone. I'm embarrassed. I'm about to go wear a paper bag to bed. Just because I'm humiliated. And that's it. Follow, subscribe, you on. You, same shit. I'm done with this one. Short episode, don't care. This team doesn't deserve my time. I'm out. Ciao. This podcast is brought to you by Anchor. It's the best way to make a podcast. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm.